Yo, what is up guys, Obelskin here, welcome back to the Ravnica Allegiance Primer. Today's guild is Simic, the green, blue, or blue-green, however you want to put it, guild. Uh, keep in mind that this is specifically for limited. I'm not going to be covering standard and modern and their stuff because I only, these videos are solely so that you can figure out which guild you want to play this weekend. And so for that reason, I'm going to be focusing on that. Uh, the Simic Guild's mechanic is Adapt. Adapt allows you to pay a certain amount of mana, depending on the card, to put a certain amount of plus one, plus one counters onto a creature if that creature does not have any plus one, plus one counters on it already. So the the kind of gist of that is it, it buffs your creatures and certain creatures have mechanics around plus one plus one counters. They buff other creatures with plus one plus one counters or they have abilities that only activate if they have plus one plus one counters. So that is going to be what you have to work around with this sort of Simic guild. So now we are going to move on to the cards. And I wanted to quickly, before I get there, apologize for the audio quality of my video yesterday. Uh, my microphone turned down its sensitivity, so it was really, really, really quiet. I fixed that today. It's going to be better. And yeah. So yeah, we're going to get onto the cards again. I'm going to tell you everything about the card and why it's good. And once again, I will not be going through every card. Just a snapshot of the guild that I think best represents what it is capable of. So because of blue, there's a lot of instants and sorceries. We're going to start off with an instant slash sorcery. It's going to be a split card. It is uh, Repudiate or Replicate. Uh, repudiate costs two hybrid blue-green mana. Uh, it is, And you can counter targeted, activated, or triggered ability. And it cannot target a mana ability. So that's... Basically, it's going to work mostly on tap abilities, but what I hate about this is that it can't target a mana ability, therefore it can't counter adapt. So if you're up against another Simic, event, uh, Simic uh, deck, that's going to be difficult. Uh, replicate for green, blue, and one allows you to create a token that is a copy of a target creature you control. This one I like, because there's a lot of creatures that do cool things, that have cool abilities, and a bunch of them... Only, like, two of them are legendary. So you want to just keep holding on to that, and that's sick. And so I think nine times out of ten, you're just going to hold this and then replicate on your turn and then just keep repudiate in case you need it. And that card was printed at rare. Next, we have Biogenic Ooze. This is, this is, this is my single favorite card in the entire set. I know I said that yesterday about the Angel, but I have changed it to this one. Biogenic Ooze is a 2-2 Ooze creature for 3 and 2 green. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 2-2 green Ooze creature token. And at the beginning of your end step, you may put you do put a plus one plus one counter on each ooze you control. And you can pay three green and one to create a 2-2 green ooze creature token. Basically, what the saying is, is minimum on your first turn that you play this, you have two three threes for five. That is a ridiculous thing. And this thing, if not dealt with quickly, is going to get obscenely out of hand. And with plus one, plus one counter synergy based on other cards in this deck, this card, even though it's printed at Mythic, if you pull it, it's going to win you a lot of games. And I'm really excited to see, even if I'm not the one that pulls it, I really want to see this card in action and see how it plays, especially in a limited format. Next up, we have Incubation Druid. Incubation Druid is an Elf Druid that is a 0-2 for 1 in green. And you can pay 3 and 2 green to adapt 3 to put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on if it does not have any plus 1 plus 1 counters. And you can tap it to add 1 mana of any type that a land you control could produce. Or if it has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, add 3 mana of that type instead. The only drawback to me for this card is the fact that if unless you have other cards that we will get to later, you need to pay 5 mana t 
to get to that three mana threshold. And that's a lot of it. That's an entire turn's worth of mana. And so this card is very slow. However, in limited, because the format is slow, this is actually going to work fairly well for you. So I, I definitely, it is printed at rare. Again, I think this is a very theoretical game ending card if left unchecked because of that just instant ramp that you get from it. Next up, uh, if you like anthropomorphic sea creatures, Civic is the guild for you. We have the Shark to Crab. Shark to Crab is a 4 4 fish octopus crab. <laughs> For two, a green and a blue printed at uncommon, and you can pay two green and a blue to adapt one. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on it, tap target creature and opponent controls, and that creature will not untap during its controller's next untap step. I like this card just because it's hilarious. I, I just, I just, the thought of a fish octopus crab just like trying to kill somebody is just insane. But. Again, this this has a lot of plus one plus one synergy, especially if like I covered in the gruel thing. If you can give this creature riot, as soon as it enters the battlefield, you can tap something down. And so I think this is a very good card to have printed at uncommon to get a little bit more of control while still getting a four four body out of it. Next, we have the combine guild mage. Combine Guild Mage is a 2-2 for a green and blue. This is printed at Uncommon, but this is also a very good card in this set. Uh, you can pay one green and tap it. To this turn, each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. Pretty good, right? Additionally, you can pay one and blue to ta and tap it to move a plus one plus one caster counter from target creature you control onto another target creature you control. Remember that uh, Shark to Crab? Now you can tap things for two mana. And you, you can tap two mana and that, put a, move a plus one plus one counter from a creature onto Shark to Crab and tap something down. So this is where that whole moving parts synergy really helps this deck out. And with this card being printed at Uncommon, and with cards like Shark to Crab being printed at Uncommon, that's not all that unfeasible that you pull both those cards and get to use them. Next up, we have Frog Mystic, another Uncommon. It is a 3-2 for two green and two blue with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, you may counter target spell. A four mana counter spell is a lot, but a four mana three two that is also a counter spell is it is also an elf lizard wizard. Uh, the rhyme of that is great. I the civic like anthropomorphic. <laughs> I just love it. But yeah, two green, two blue counter spell three two very good in this set. And the fact that all these cards are uncommon make civic actually fairly scary because. A lot of the other things we've been covered, their bombs, or not even their bombs, but their like good cards are rare or higher. Next up, we have one of two legendaries in this deck or in this thing. This one is printed at Mythic, and I think this is a very good commander. And I would definitely want to, if I pull this, I definitely would try and build an EDH deck around this by myself and see how it brews. Uh, it is Prime Speaker Vanifar. It is a 2-4 for two green and blue. Is an elf ooze wizard. So it, it gets plus one plus one counters for oozes, I guess. You can tap it and sack another creature to search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. Put that card on the battlefield and shuffle your library, but you can only activate that as a sorcery. So it's basically birthing pod on a creature. So that makes it a little bit worse, but. I, I want to see how this deck plays in limited because I want to see if someone can actually build a decent, like, birthing pod deck around Prime Speaker Vanifar. It's it's really, it just really intrigues me to see if that could possibly happen. Because that could actually be really good. Because you could curve into anything. You could run, you could run Rakdos cards without having a green blue, without even running Mountain or Swamps, and curve into Rakdos. And that's, that's just really fucking hilarious, and I'm excited for that. Uh, next, we have the next, the other legendary creature. It is Zagana Utopian Speaker. Uh, it is a 4-4 four, for four, two green and blue. It is a Merfolk Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it, draw a card. You can pay four green and blue to adapt four, and each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has Trample. This is a very good card in limited because 
you're going to have the time to invest a lot of mana into putting plus one, plus one counters on this thing. And the fact that they have trample allows you to swing more and deal, get in damage without, don't have to worry about chump blockers, especially the 1-1 one, one chump blockers in Orzhov. So that's what I really like about Zagana Utopian Speaker is that it really is good synergy and it's a 4-4, four, four, so it's not going to, it's going to be harder to destroy you with instants and sorceries, especially the red ones. Next up, we have Steeple Creeper. Uh, it is a 4-2 for 2 in green. Uh, you can pay 3 in a blue to give it flying until end of turn. I Once again, this is a card, this is printed at common. This is also a card that's really good because a 4 mana to basically, you're basically, unless you're playing against like Orzhov or in some cases Rakdos, like if you're up against Gruelers or this is pretty, you're basically paying 4 mana to deal 4 damage because, like I said, Gruel does not have a whole lot of things to deal with flyer, and Azores is really dependent on getting the white flyers in order to be able to deal with this. And so this flying frog snake that's coming at you, if, I don't know why, uh, can really help you out with that. Next, we have another instant. It is Applied Biomancy. It is a green-blue. You can choose one or both. You can target, give target creature plus one, plus one until end of turn, and you can bounce a target creature to its owner's hand. This is very good for those creature tokens, especially the beast ones in Gruul, or also if you want to target a, a spirit to get it out of there. It is also a very good early game combat trick to help you get some creature advantage. And last but not least, that I, the last one that I want to cover for this set is another really funny anthropomorphic just mishmash of creatures. Uh, it is Scuttle Gator. Scuttle Gator is a 6 6 for 4 green, blue, green, blue, hybrid mana. Uh, with Defender, uh, you can pay 6 and green, blue, green, blue, hybrid mana to adapt 3. That's a pretty ridiculous mana thing because a lot of games don't actually make turn 8 in limited. Even though I say it's a slower format, sometimes it's not. And I feel like the games in this pre release are going to be just a tick faster. And as long as it has a plus one, plus one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So this is going to be one of those things where you want to try and move a plus one, plus one counter onto Scuttle Gator, or use instants and sorceries to put a plus one, plus one counter on Scuttle Gator, or try and give it Riot. And that that is really good because that's a very big creature. That's going to help you kind of stall out the game a little bit until you can drop a bomb and win the game. So that's all the creatures for uh, Simic that I would like, or that is all the cards for Simic that I would like to go over. Again, please do look at the spoilers if you want to see all the cards. There are some really good rares and mythics out there that I did not cover. And yeah, so what can you splash with Simic? With Simic, uh, you could splash white to get Azorius with your blue. I personally don't think that Azorius and Simic have a whole lot of synergy. I would really only utilize it maybe to get the white removal spells that are in there because the, that's really what white is doing in this set. And so it's not necessarily the best, but it's a good defensive option if you have the right cards for it. Alternatively, what you really want to do is get that synergy with plus one, plus one counters by splashing red with gruel and hopefully just trying to throw riot at things so that you don't have to pay mana costs to adapt well, you don't, have to, you don't have to pay to adapt something to get its plus one, plus one counter trigger like Scuttle Gator. And then you can save your mana and actually cast spells. And you get the red, like, burden-ish type spells and combat tricks and stuff like that. So that's what I ideally would like to do. And that, and me running Gruel, I definitely want to try and get some Simic spells in there. And hopefully I will have the opportunity to do that. So that is all for this pre-release primer. Um, tomorrow we will be doing Rakdos, and then Friday we will be doing the Zorus. Uh, so yeah, get ready for some chaos, guys, and happy planeswalking.